Hello there, everybody, and welcome along to this week's edition of the official EFL podcast. Another bumper episode is coming your way. Sitting at the Championship Summit, we get the lowdown on Preston North End's best start to a season since 1928. Listen, we've had an unbelievable start, uh, a start that you can only imagine, especially with the, the, the tough games you've had. And then to finish the, the campaign in terms of the five games before the international break, to be top of the league, why, why wouldn't you enjoy it? Joining us on co-hosting duty is a familiar Sky Sports voice to get us through all of the runners and riders across the EFL. And I'm delighted to be back on the pod. Obviously, the blackmail worked, so here I am. But um, Monday night we were together, weren't we, doing that game? And uh, it's always it's always a pleasure driving around the country and doing doing games at various different levels. And Tigers boss Liam Rossini joins us to take part in the 72 in 72, the EFL's most brutal competition. It can only mean one thing. Yes, that's right. This is the official EFL podcast. OK, then let's get cracking with this week's pod. And I'm delighted to say he's come back for more. He enjoyed it so much the first time. We've cajoled him back into the co-host chair. It's Sky Sports' David Stowell. David, how are we, my friend? Very well. How are you, sir? Good. I'm good. You've been on your travels as ever. Monday night, you were at Cambridge. We're going to come on to that in a little bit more detail, but you got back in, in good time and in, in, in good shape. Yes, it was an exciting game in the end, and I'm delighted to be back on the pod. Obviously, the blackmail worked, so here I am. But um, Monday night we were together, weren't we, doing that game? And uh, it's always it's always a pleasure driving around the country and doing doing games at various different levels. I was at Anfield covering Premier League games on Sunday, or at Liverpool on uh, Aston Villa on Sunday, and then Cambridge Reading on Monday. So a bit of a bit of a contrast, <laughs> bit of a contrast in terms of um, you know number of fans yeah, and all of that, yeah. but the same desire on show on the pitch, mm. and it's it's great to see. Um, Cambridge and Reading going toe to toe as they did, and as you say, we'll get onto that in a, yes, in a little bit. It was a cracking game of football. I thoroughly enjoyed it. It's the international break, of course, the first one of the season. Let's get right to the point, right to the top of the point of the summit of the championship, which is where we find Preston North. And it's been a cracking start to the season for Ryan Lowe and his men. We're going to be speaking to Ryan in due course later on in the pod um what have you made of them what do you base it on and can they last the course oh some <laughs> tricky questions are there what i would say to start with is it's been a brilliant start for them clearly and i looked back at after five games of last season how well they were doing there compared to now mm -hmm. and the, que the the answer is they've doubled the points tally basically Five games in last season, they had seven points. They've got 13 now in their top of the table. And if you look at some of the fixtures that they've played this season versus the outcome of those games mm -hmm. last season, they've got 10 points from, from four of the games uh, this season compared to just six last season. And obviously, some of those comparisons are a bit odd because mm -hmm. teams are different and uh, you know they're relatively different, Preston, in the league compared to other sides. Yeah. But there is something there, I think. There's a big improvement. There's a a big improvement in output in terms of goals. Will Keane has been huge for that. Four in five league games for him. And I'm delighted for him, having worked with him a lot down through the years. He was a standout player in a youth team that included Paul Pogba and Jesse Lingard and Sam Johnston and people mm. like that at Manchester United. But then injuries bit and he's relaunched his career as things have gone on. Had a bit of a sliding doors moment when he was injured at Manchester United because has he not got injured in an FA Cup tie against Shrewsbury, then he might have got in when Marcus Rashford yeah. eventually got in and obviously the rest with Marcus's history. So delighted for Will and I think it's it's been a solid um, start for Preston defensively and then they've obviously done the business going forward. So it will be intriguing to speak to Ryan and get his take on it all and I'm sure he'll have his feet on the ground. Yes, we'll get it straight from the horse's mouth in due course and my word, can that man talk. Um, Leicester City, <laughs> it's a first defeat for them at the hands of Hull City. Um, Enzo Maresca doing wonderful work, of course, with a very, very good squad. We all believe that they should be, let's use this overused phrase, there or thereabouts come the end of the season. But let's turn our attention to Hull City and Liam Rossini. Liam's actually taken our 72 in 72 challenge in this week's pod as well. Um, a wonderful setup in the way that they went about beating Leicester City. Good work done in the transfer window as well. How dark are these dark horses and how much attention and light should we be shedding on the Tigers, Dan Stowley? 
Yeah, it's a good point, actually, because I think he's quietly gone about the job really well at Hull City. Uh, we know him well, obviously, from from doing bits and pieces mm-hmm. with us on Sky Sports. He talks very well in the media, and I can only imagine he talks very well to his players. I, I sort of see him as the kind of manager that I'd like to play for if I were a professional footballer, the way I think he's got that ability to... Um, to have a go if he needs to, but also that ability to put the arm around a little bit and use the experience that he's gathered through a lot of coaching, um, not so much the, the management side. He's done a lot of coaching previously and, of course, playing as well at, at various different levels and watching his dad when his dad was in charge. Um, he he just wants an improvement game on game, season on season. I mean, I spoke to him a few weeks ago at the Blackburn game, which which Hull City won eventually two late goals from Aaron Connolly, who's who's a, one of those interesting recruits that you, you, you kind of mentioned earlier earlier on there um, and I, I just I think he's got a very balanced squad going on there he's got Ozan Tufan with the experience the flair and, and crucially goals of course in recent times um, Scott Twine a very astute loan signing I think mm-hmm. Liam Delap, Tyler Morton Jaden Philogene Aaron Connolly and Harry Vaughan we, we covered Harry Vaughan's debut last season at Ewood Park we did um, yes. when you were presenting I was commentating and he looks a, a real one for the future he's signed a deal a long term deal with them now so I think he's building something there, Liam. Mm-hmm. And um, the only fear from a Hull City point of view, if you're a Hull City fan, would be perhaps if he builds too well too quickly, then you know people will gather and, and will, will want to perhaps steal him away. But I think, I think there is certainly a team to watch this season. And it's interesting that they take on Leicester City and, and break Leicester's brilliant start to the campaign. All eyes on the Tigers then between now and the end of the season. Uh, a coupon buster from the weekend, and I mean this with the greatest respect, Sunderland 5. Southampton nil. We spoke to Tony Mowbray after the game who reaffirmed the fact that he does moan a lot. So in my head, I'm thinking, why didn't I say, <laughs> thanks for joining us, Tony Moanbray? That's the only reason I brought that up, Stella, <laughs> just to say that I thought that three days later. Uh, but Pierre Equer, very much to the fore. So many good things for Sunderland. A lot of chat for them about who was coming in and out the door. Big name gone with Ross Stewart down to Southampton. However, they kept... Uh, a couple of the other ones that they needed to keep and they were rewarded the fans 41 and a half thousand people watching a championship game on a Saturday lunchtime up at the stadium of like a glorious glorious thing to see speaking of glorious Exeter City at the very top of League One tell me more please well, it's a, it's a really interesting story, this. I think uh, there's sort of sense of poetry to this, if you like, because 20 years ago this week, the club was essentially on its knees, relegated to the conference. Um, some, some really dark days in terms of ownership, which resulted in prison sentences and various other things. Uh, the club was in uh, a lot of debt. Mm. We're talking millions of pounds worth of debt. And the fans seized ownership of the club and have taken it on over the last two decades to regain the EFL status, uh, the, the crucial FA Cup tie against Manchester United 2005, which raised so much money to, to clear most of the debts and, and get the club going in the right direction. And, you know, 20 years on, the first time in their history, they're top of League One, uh, round three of the Carabao Cup for the first time since 1989. Uh, in the black rather than the red financially, which is, is huge. New training facilities and, of course, an academy now which is really flourishing. We've seen Ollie Watkins mm-hmm. and Matt Grimes and various other players in recent years, Ethan Ampadu and players like that, come through the academy and earn the club a lot of money either in the, the, the initial sell-on deals or the clauses that have come from it. And it's it's a triumph, really, for a well-run organisation. And, and Gary Caldwell, as manager, I think, has done very well at the start of the season because many people would have looked at Exeter City's fixtures in August and the start of September and thought that this, this could be a struggle, mm-hmm. uh, particularly having recently sold Sam Nombe as well, the, uh, the, the top goal scorer from last season. But uh, he's done brilliantly as manager. I think the players have all bought into... The scenario, I think they're not necessarily superstars in the team for, for that level. It's more a team effort, which is, is is probably a good thing for a manager to know that he's got depth to call upon and uh, and, and, and a well, well-run well squad. And he did a lot of things in pre-season which were interesting. For example, uh, getting the players up to train at 5am when they weren't <laughs> expecting it. Then when they thought the training session had finished, he'd add on a 5k run at the end and all these things to basically you keep them You use the word interesting. I, that just sounds awful. <laughs> Brutal. Brutal. <laughs> yeah. But I think the idea was to keep them on their toes so that in the season you never know quite what you're going to yeah. face in matches. And pre-season sort of mirrored that for them so um, you know we'll, we'll see how they get on from here but certainly 
as I say, an emotional thing for the club to be where they are 20 years on from their darkest days. It's wonderful work, obviously, being done by Gary, If even if the, the methods do suggest a hint of madness. Um, Bolton, a good win for them against Derby County. A good win in the EFL Trophy as well, beating Salford City 3-0. Busy night in the EFL Trophy last night. Cambridge are now sixth. They beat Reading, a game that you were at, Stowley. Um just give us a reflection of what you saw in the game. And, I mean, the, the job Mark Bonner's has done. I mean, barring parking the cars and cutting the grass, he's done everything at Cambridge, hasn't he, with regards to uh, employment there. But he's very happy indeed. But, again, another manager, I presume, isn't, get too car- isn't getting too carried away. But what a cracking game of football that was. Yeah, it was a great game. And, and you're right about Mark. He is, is Cambridge through and through. So... He loves the job. He loves doing well in the job. And, of course, he, he has done well in the job. Last season, they, they struggled, but they turned it around amazingly at the end to stay up on the final day of the season. And if you sort of dip into the well-used box of cliches, um, he, he wants to, to turn the Abbey Stadium into a bit of a fortress, which they've done of late. Mm-hmm. Six wins from their last eight home league games. And I think that the key for them now is solid defence, five clean sheets in the last seven um, at home in the league. And they've got attacking threats, as we saw the other night against Reading, mm-hmm. and they've got that bit of experience. That's where Reading fell down a little bit, I thought. Talented football is in the Reading ranks, but seven of their starting 11 were 22 or younger. And they, they just need that that, uh, that rawness, which will get them so far, to turn into a little bit more experience, which will come, it'll have to come, uh, during the course mm-hmm. of this season. But someone like James Brophy, I thought was brilliant Fantastic. for the Cambridge goal the other night. He says they're very confident when they play at home because... The, they love the surroundings. The fans get right behind them. Great crowd again the other night, 6,800, I think it was, inside uh, the Abbey Stadium. So they will kick on from here, I would imagine. Whether they're up there at the end or not is another question, mm-hmm. but certainly a great start. So the top six in League One being Exeter top, Bolton second, Stevenage, Port Vale, Pompey, Cambridge in sixth, Oxford just behind them in seventh on the same points. That could be a rivalry, of course, to keep an eye on in this specific division. Down at the bottom, Cheltenham at the bottom. Fleetwood, of course, parting company with Scott Brown after their defeat to Charlton, who won their first game after Dean Holden had been moved on. You see how this all kind of works. And we wish, obviously, Scott and Dean all the very best at getting back into it very quickly indeed. Into League Two we go. Now, there's a cracking game in the offing at the weekend. Notts County currently sit top. MK Dons are second. So, of course, it's MK Dons taking on Notts County at Stadium MK. Managers here both up for the manager of the month. Uh, Luke Williams, of course, leading Notts. And Graham Alexander in charge of MK. Now, all the talk... Stowley was on Wrexham, and I've not mentioned them for a couple of weeks. I've done really well in not doing that. That's no disrespect to <laughs> that particular part of Wales, but where it's it's. I think it's safe to say there's been a lot of attention on that football club. Um, Notts County came up after them, or just behind. I mean, and and the points tally, the goals scored, everything that they did to climb back into the football league. That team, that club, deserved to get themselves back there. It appears to me that they've been getting on with their business very quietly and very effectively. In this particular fixture at the weekend, are we seeing, by virtue of where they are and what you've seen on the pitch, the two best teams at this moment in time in League 2 going head-to-head? Yes, I think we are. And what's interesting with the Notts County story is, and Luke Williams alluded to this the other day, just how perhaps a not the start they wanted mm-hmm. at the beginning of the very beginning of the season, but oh, they it was a thumping, responded, wasn't it? Mm. Yeah, um, I was being kind, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but it, you know, it, it's it's interesting. They've won all three at home, mm. bit of a mixed bag away, so one win, one draw, one defeat away from home. But the home form has been terrific, and that's propelled them up the table. And it's that ability to respond which is so important in football. I think we talked about it a few weeks ago, and and Gary uh, spoke about it a couple of weeks back as well. That when something bad happens in football, you've got to respond to it. You've got to turn things around physically, obviously with the ball at your feet, but also mentally in your head. Get over the the knockbacks quickly, whether it be injury or defeat. And they've certainly done that. Mm-hmm. And uh, maybe that's where the the resilience that they built up last season, chasing mm-hmm. Wrexham and, and trying to make sure that they didn't drop away from promotion with such an impressive points tally, because um, that's a, a mental wrangle in itself, I suppose. Uh, it, that's sort of helped some of those players along the way this season and some great recruitment as well has uh, has worked a trick. And from Graham Alexander's point of view with 
MK Dons. We've spoken to him on the pod this season already. He talked about picking the pieces up. He talked about reacting to, as your point is making, David, about the the way one season can be and going at it again. That Again, it, it, it strikes me, Graham, as someone who gets on with stuff with a minimum of fuss. Yeah, and he's been there seen it and done it before in football, hasn't he? Um, as a player and as a manager, vastly experienced. Mm-hmm. So a good person to have in the dugout, not least because of the ability he's got as a, as a coach, but because of where he's, where he's played and what he's done. And for MK Don's fans, I mean, clearly the, the, there's a backstory to the club, but without going into all of that, it's been a strange few years in the sense that a couple of seasons ago, they were heading for, for promotion, potentially. They were down at Plymouth Argyle. I covered the game when they won 5-0, mm-hmm. Scott Twine stealing the show, ruining Plymouth's playoff dreams at the time. And then, of course, last season happens and they find themselves back in League Two. So, yeah, it's that response again that's required. And if, if there's a manager who can who can talk players around to try and get that sort of losing mentality away and turn it around in the opposite direction, then you would imagine Graham's the man to do it. He's the man indeed. Just to get us up to speed with the EFL Trophy results, it was AFC Wimbledon beating Stevenage. Well done to Johnny Jackson, another manager at that level that's up for the manager of the month. Blackpool beating Barrow, Fleetwood beating Tranmere, Forest Green Rovers beating Shrewsbury, Gillingham beating Orient 2-1, Oxford beating Northampton 3-1, Barnsley beating Grimsby 2-0, Wrexham getting through past Newcastle United 1-0, Accrington Stanley beating Carlisle, Bolton, as I said, beating Salford City, Bristol Rovers through, Crawley through, Harrogate Town, come on the town, they're through, and Port Vale through against Crew. I mean, it's a wonderful competition, isn't it? And one that we've both enjoyed working on over the last few seasons. Certainly is, and we had a great final last season. I mean, the last few finals have been entertaining, mm. but... Uh, Bolton Wanderers were phenomenal the way they took the game to Plymouth Argyle at Wembley last season and ultimately of course Plymouth Argyle fans would say they had the last laugh because mm-hmm. they went up and Bolton didn't uh, but getting a trophy along the way was was uh, you, you'd think a step in the right direction for Bolton after all the, the, the troubles in the past and clearly they're looking to build on that this season with a, a tilt at trying to get back into the championship. A superb first half, Stowley. Thank you so much. We're going to take a break. We're going to hear from Liam Rossini with the 72 in 72. Do we think he's going to be the best so far? Well, I would imagine he'll approach it like he does management and be methodical. So we'll see where that gets him. Yes, we'll see. I might be wrong. Well, well and uh, <laughs> you, you, take, you put your feet in, my friend. I'll come and get you in a minute. Hi, my name's Liam Rossini, and this is the 72 in 72. Hull City, Derby County, Reading, Bristol City, Bristol Rovers, Plymouth... Portsmouth, Oxford, uh, Leeds, Swansea, uh, Leicester, uh, Huddersfield, uh, Watford. Uh, This is harder than I thought. Uh, Who have we played? Norwich, Ipswich, uh, Wimbledon, Charlton. Um, I'm doing geography now. Uh, Flipping heck, this is tough. Accrington, Stanley, Morecambe, uh, Lincoln, Oxford, Charlton. Said that already. Uh, Who's in our league? Someone help me. This is, I must have got more than 20. This is unbelievable. Uh, oh, I've hit an absolute wall. Um, Bristol City, Bristol Rovers, Plymouth, Exeter, Torquay. Torquay aren't in the league. Uh, Nottingham, Notts Forest, no, they're not in it. Notts County. Uh, oh, I've hit a wall here. Why is it so hard? It's unbelievable. Um, oh, I've absolutely gone. I'm not coming across well with this. Please tell me I'm not the worst one. I've absolutely hit a wall. Um, Leicester, Southampton, um, Watford, Wickham. Oh my God, how many did I get? I'm not sure. You said Bristol City twice, Bristol Rose. Yeah, that's the sad to be thankful. I mean, you didn't. Uh, you were the worst ever. Trust me. I'll no, take that. No that's that. hard, you know, yeah, to think, think in that think, way. Yeah, it was Okie dokie, Liam Rossini there taking on the 72 in 72. 23 for him. Matt Smith still leading the way with a gargantuan 38. And Stuart Dallas with 17 at the bottom. Now, we're back at it. David Stowell is back with us for the second half after his brief stint. And when you are about to interview this next guest you do need at least two sets of ears to make sure that you hear everything that he says because my word you can talk for England <laughs> it's Preston boss Ryan Lowe Ryan how are you oh, are we pros you okay alright David 
We're good. All good, we're Ryan. Good. Yeah, yeah, all good. I like, I like the fact you addressed us both there as we are the couple for this uh, podcast this week, <laughs> the co-host couple. Exactly. Um, well, I heard you giving Gary Weaver a bit of stick there, so I'll get that one in. Well, we like to there, anyway, yeah. mate. We like to. Yeah. yeah, well, once we start recording, we just turn into our professional nice people. You know what we're really like, mate. That's exactly what this pod's yes. all about. Um, yeah. Top of the championship, how does that feel? Um, do you know what, Prutz? I, I didn't realise, obviously... Listen, when you look at the games on the Saturday when we were playing and you see Leicester getting beaten, you think, oh, and then our fans think and we're top of the league. And I was thinking, really? Um, but <laughs> listen, we, and again, and that's not being disrespectful to us or the, the players. We, listen, we've had an unbelievable start, um, a start that you can only imagine, especially with the, the, the tough games you've had. And then to finish the, the campaign in terms of the five games before the international break, to be top of the league, why, why wouldn't you enjoy it? Now, listen, mm. as I said to you on a text, Enjoy it while you can. You might you might stay there, you might not, you might drop down, whatever it may take you. But when you've been, as it stands, on 13 points and you're top of the division, why wouldn't you enjoy it? And I said to all our lads before we had a little bit of a break is, go and enjoy it. Um, be in top of the league for the international break. But when we get back, get to harder. Because mm-hmm. a lot of teams are wanting to come. These are top of the league. You know what it's like, Prots, when you're playing teams. Whether we people are looking at us to be there or not, it doesn't really matter. But we're there because we worked our socks off to get there. Um, all my staff everyone at the training ground uh, Pete and Craig getting the, the players in and most importantly that the, the players have been fantastic we've had a lot of injuries uh, which are all going to be back after the international break and they've stuck together lads who were injured have come to games travelled away with the players real camaraderie and the togetherness is, is proving dividends for us at the moment along with the football the lads are playing Do you feel like you've got your squad now Ryan? Like you, 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 you kind of Yeah you know, time in in the in the job is something that you don't often get as a manager, isn't it? So, do you feel now after the recruitment from the summer that it's really turning into the Ryan Low Preston? Yeah, well, you know what, David, as you well know, you, you you commentate on all the teams and all the players up and down the country and managers, and you know we've just had two fantastic signings in Militan Osmond. That's how I think I say it, anyway. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> that was on the list of questions. I mean, because yeah. it, it's a great name to make a, a song up about. Oh. I've not thought about it yet, but the fans Definitely will get haven't. there. <laughs> and, and Liam Miller to add with the quality we've got. You know, we've got Robbie Brady, we've got Ben Whiteman, we've got hopefully Calvin Ramsey not far too far. We've got Chad Evans not too far. Emil Reese, Slayton Stewart. You know, these these players are all like my players and all quality players who we've been missing as such for the first five or six weeks of the season. So, in terms of my squad, David, listen, when I took the Preston North End job, I knew it was longevity and I knew how to build it, and I probably got my fingers burnt a little bit by saying I want to do this and want to do that and. When you get into the championship and, and money plays a big, massive part in, in terms of what you do. But I've always been the case of if I've got £20 to spend, I can't spend 30 And the owner's been excellent with me and, and, and backed me all the way. Uh, along may that continue. And then I have to put a team on the pitch and get players in, in the round who, who we feel is capable of buying into our philosophy, our style, everything we want to do. Uh, and they've certainly been doing that. It took a little bit of a while for some of the players because we asked them to play a little bit out from the back and it was okay. And then we got caught a couple of times. We're playing a little bit different at the moment. But look, mate, what what I can say is the players have been taking on every instruction we've asked them to do. We have stuff about the game plans and, and the credit goes to them, David, I must say. The key thing that you've mentioned there, going off the back of the way that the clubs run, and I know from chatting to Peter Riddell in the past about what the perception of Preston North End is, what the fans want from Preston North End, and ultimately as well, what you and the players want. You're all very, very ambitious. You're all yeah. looking at clubs in and around that flirt with the Premier League, that go in and come out of the Premier League, that find themselves in a sticky situation off the back of that, that flirt with the bottom end of the Championship. There has always been that semblance of sensibility, I feel, with regards the ownership with the Hemmings family as well about how Preston North End is run and I get that sense from you that when I came in that day and watching watching your training being able to chat to everybody that sense of responsibility is there because it is very easy isn't it to get caught up and go let's just throw everything at it that we don't yeah. have to try and get to the promised land and when you don't that's when clubs get in a lot of trouble isn't it? It, it is Prutch yeah as, as, you said, as you said you know a lot more than me of doing the games and commentating and hosting you know, there's a lot of football clubs that go out of business. Preston North End will never do that. I, mm. How can I argue with the, with, with the family or when I say argue with them, how can I ask them for more money when they put 12 million, 30 million pound a year in out their own pot? Mm. You know, that that's amazing. And then we, we fulfil the rest and the club runs off whatever it runs off. It's definitely a loss. Um, that, that, that got me. I, I felt once I knew that situation and knew that's what they did, 
a, a massive respect for the owner anyway and the family for allowing us to continue that. When Mr. Emmings passed away, he left it all to, to the family to, to go on and, and, and continue it. And we have to stick to our guns. We have to stick to what we're doing. Look, can you overachieve in, in any division? Yeah, of course you can. Have I overachieved before? Yes, I have. Yeah, and that's obviously got to be our aim. It doesn't matter, but it's as you well know, you know, you were on bundles of money. I was on less. I was well better player than <laughs> oh, you. But... God, <laughs> almighty, see. That's, that's aside, the, the, but... the biggest lie coming out of this podcast yeah, this week, ladies true, and gentlemen. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> in saying that, if you're going to pay someone 20 grand a week to 10 grand a week, it doesn't matter, you know, just because they've been on whatever. It, it, the fact of the matter is that you can only pay what you can pay. Mm. And what we do is we get a group of players, we recruit smartly, and we're going to have the best chance hopefully every year by trying to have a go with what, what the family put in and if it's good enough great if it's not at least we'll try I think that the mid-table finishes the last couple of seasons have been there 11 points the first year when they were 19th in the division last season we were 6 points out which was a real kick in the backside really because I felt we could have had an opportunity and speaking to you guys towards the back end we mm. were 6 points out and ah, really and that, that, that hurt me but the mindset's obviously changed now. You know, we keep going again and we're obviously going to be underdogs playing against a lot of teams this season and, and bring that underdog tag on because that's what we like. Listen, we're not getting too carried away, Prutz, but we're definitely not going to, going to overspend and we're definitely going to recruit smartly, which we've done since I've been in the build and got some fantastic players and we'll coach the players to the best of our ability. What about from a, a sort of mental side of things in the game? You've had a lot of highs as a, a manager so far, your time at Berry, your time at, at Plymouth Argyle, and, and now coming to Preston, of course. When when everything's going well, surely it's sort of riding on the crest of a wave. If, if things dip a little bit, who who looks after Ryan Lowe? How do you how do you sort of pick yourself up and go yeah. again? Do you know what? Me, me kids look after me, David, and me lads, hence why we're, we're away here now, having a, a little bit of a golfing tournament between us, I should say. Um, <laughs> And again, Which, just, just to fill people in, you've, you've already nearly come to blows with that, haven't you, on the golf course? We, we can't come to blows, me and my lad. He batter <laughs> me the size of him now. But it's been, we, we, we felt we'd come and play golf out the way as such, so no one knew how bad we were. But, <laughs> but to, to answer the question, David, is yeah, when everything's going well, you get the messages, everyone's there for you, and you know, it, it's all great, isn't it? And sometimes. You know, what I've learned to do now is manage myself and, and be around my kids, Alfie and Daisy, you know, and my missus, which is obviously the strong point for you. But again, who coaches the coach? It's it's very unreal. It's very unrealistic that who someone's going to give me some information. But I try and surround myself by good people. And I don't let, you know, people will talk and say, oh, you're doing this, you're doing that. I, I go, yeah, well, I'm just doing my job. I don't get too carried away with it. I'm just doing my job. I'm being the best Ryan Law can be for Preston North End, and that's more important to me. Yeah, I do feel a disappointment, obviously, when we lose it. It is tough, because I, I said this before on air, of, of you know, I try and treat myself as a fan. So when we lose at Preston North End, I feel the pain the Preston North End feel, Preston North End fans feel. It's like when Liverpool lose. Quick story, I went to, we, we beat um, Sheffield Wednesday the other week, or was it yeah, Sheffield Wednesday and I was on a crest of the wave and it was great and then I thought you know what Liverpool were playing um, Liverpool were playing away at Chelsea was it Sheffield Wednesday or was it um, the first game anyway what, one of the games and, and I chose to go I had a great day going down there and I was coming home disappointed in myself because I'm analysing Liverpool's performance and Liverpool's <laughs> players I thought I'm not I'm not going to do that again because then I've, I've had a I've had a great afternoon on the Saturday we won we got three points and then I go and watch Liverpool and they were fantastic by the way but then I'm kicking myself going why didn't this happen why didn't you do that why didn't Salah score them two goals so I've sort of now going to give them away games a miss and sort of just concentrate <laughs> on press the North End because it's the stuff you do and what I've learned to do David is I've learned to switch off mate and, and that's the most important thing as a manager but it's certainly Obvious that it's helping at this moment in time. Best start to a league season since 1928-29. My word, that's a long time ago. Uh, a little bit of a break now. Back in uh, with bells on with regards to the championship in a few days, I would presume. And then a very familiar set of faces waiting yeah. for you the first game back. Plymouth Argyle. Stephen Schumacher as well. Just gives a taste of what Shoe's done so far. And did you see that in him as a number two team? Yeah. Being able to lead a team like he's done? Well, you know, you're saying about switching off. I, I was here and I woke up the other morning and, and I, I thought, oh, next game is Plymouth Argyle. Make sure we're ready for that. <laughs> so where is your time to switch off, David, as you were saying before? It's hard, isn't it? Um, I spoke to Shuey on Sunday. It was his lad's birthday, little Vincent's birthday. He wished them all the best. And 
I think he was getting away and, and that's it now. There'll be no contact until Saturday, till the Saturday when we play each other. But as far as Shui goes, he's he's done unbelievable. Uh, did I see that in him? Yeah, of course. He was a top assistant manager and a top coach uh, and he's took the club to a different level. Uh, and as you said, they're waiting for us. They're on the way. I said to you before about you know us being top of the league for that game. That they're going to want to come and showcase what they can they can do. They've they've been fantastic. I've watched a lot of the games already because I'm supporting Shuey when we're not playing them. Um, and yeah, it's going they're going to be a tough tough team to beat because as you've seen already, and the win will games of football, a lot of people may have had them down to to be relegated. Not a chance. I, I see them finishing minimum mid table. And they'll give every every opportunity, every team, an opportunity to get three points from them um, because they're, they're a good little outfit. What was that like though when you when you left Plymouth Argyle and you left him behind essentially because yeah. he took the job? You've then got to, you know, work out how you're going to go forward as a manager with a new assistant and in a new club. Um, there's a challenge to that, isn't there? That is me, and there was a time, David. I didn't know what to do. <laughs> um, <laughs> You're looking around, going, I, "No, she was, was going like, to get in the car in yeah, a minute. Where is he?" <laughs> well, he was actually it was a funny story. We laugh about it now. He was actually, I'd actually left me out, uh, me me car behind with him, hoping he'd bring someone to be close with me. <laughs> And he ends up taking me car and taking the job. <laughs> but but uh, it was an opportunity that he, he couldn't turn down. And in the mix of all that, Mike Marsh was always on our radar. I think um, there was a, there was a couple of opportunities for me to potentially leave Plymouth Argyle before I left. Um, and I won't I won't name the teams or whatever. But there was a couple of opportunities that may have occurred, and I may have to have made the decision early. And I chose to stay and stick with it, and you know because I wanted to fulfil it. But when a football club like Preston North End comes calling, you you just can't say no. Um, to be back home with the family also was was a massive um, stake in it. But when I was talking about assistant managers, we were already talking about Mike Marsh, who'd been out mm. of work, who left Swansea with Steve Cooper, who's, who's a top top coach by the way. Uh, and a top top bloke because, and then when I knew I was hopefully going to bring him and Shuey with us because, and then obviously Shuey turned to say he'd stay and, and and that was fine and and then the minute I met Marsh, he come to my house the night when Shuey agreed to take the, the um, Plymouth Argyle job. We sat there. He must have had ten cups of tea. We spoke to each other of how we work, how he works, and I went right. What are you thinking? He went right. I'm in. And that was it. I'm in. <laughs> and, and he left ours. We met the next morning. We went into Preston North End, got the contacts all sorted, and. Uh, look, listen, she was still one of my best mates and always will be fantastic coach, but I couldn't have, I couldn't have fell on another top, top coach and top, top person in Mike Marsh to, to fulfil his role. Well, like, having seen you both work uh, at first at close quarters, I, I just love Marsh. He's very, I'm a coach. Don't ask me about anything else. I don't care about travel. I don't care what time I'm in. Yeah. <laughs> this is what time we're training. You get, get yourselves there, get yourselves ready. And the, the way that he runs a session, the way that you both run your sessions is, is fascinating to watch, mate. Um, talk about personnel. It's safe to say Will Keane's come in and made a hell of a lot of friends and uh, made a wonderful impression on everyone involved in Preston so far because of the standards that he's set. You know what, mate? Fantastic. We, when we, we had an opportunity to get Will... It was like hurry up and get in the car and get here. Um, <laughs> it was. It was that. It was that. Peter had obviously spoke to Wigan and put a bid in for him, and he come running over to my office and said they've accepted the bid. I went right. We'll get him in then. It was as if he was like shocked. But listen, Keno had been a Preston early on in his career when he, he was come on loan from Man United. Uh, I think he'd only scored one or two goals maybe for them at that time. He'd obviously gone away, and the more people you speak about. To, about Will Keane is you can't get any better person he's a fantastic lad fantastic pro does everything right and even as we've been playing with one up front at the moment but he's leading that line fantastically well um, you know lo and behold he's now got a call up to the, to the Republic of Ireland squad which with them openly come back unscathed um, <laughs> and, and it, it was a just reward but again you know he, he possibly could be on as strikers will always say he's on four goals he could be on six goals easily but he's been fantastic and he's a great addition yeah it's something that you knew what, uh, about from back in the day, didn't you, David? You was you were mentioning earlier on with regards to sliding doors moments and how people's careers can kind of go in slightly different directions, but it's kind of gone full circle and finds himself back at a place that he's obviously feeling very at home at. Yeah, and funny enough, I, I, I messaged Will this morning and, and had a, a quick chat with him, and it's interesting that uh, when he was a youngster at Man United, when I, I used to work with him a bit, he was a number nine, firmly a number nine. 
um, with Ravel Morrison sort of in behind him as the number 10, if you like, in the youth yeah. team, Paul Pogba as the eight, um, and Jesse Lingard in the side as well, either out wide or whatever. Uh, Will sort of changed his game over the years, hasn't he? Maybe maybe injury slightly played a part with that at first, um, but now sort of more of a 10, sometimes a nine. He drops quite deep to pick it up for you, doesn't he? And, and has done it his time at Wigan as well. Yeah, yeah. Well, listen, we, we utilise him. He can come towards the ball and we have two turns running off him. He can be that target man, the vocal point of getting all over the ball for us. And I've, I've always on to him about staying in between the goal posts. You know, sometimes these strikers nowadays think, oh, I'm not touching the ball and you know, I need to get a couple of touches and link up and look good. Well, it doesn't matter how good you look for me as a striker. It's how many goals you score, basically. And that's what we're saying to him is, don't worry about the work. Let the people do the work in front of you and you just make sure you're in them right positions. And lo and behold, he's been getting in them right positions. He's been fantastic. So given where you are now, before we let you go, top of the championship you've preached that early season plenty of games to go plenty of water to go under the bridge can you tell us outwardly what Preston's base level of success is this season given as you say the disappointment of getting incrementally closer to the yeah. top six over the last couple of seasons well, well Prutz I'm not going to avoid the question but I am because <laughs> <laughs> see, see you later then <laughs> so, but, you 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 look you know I, I look at all your predictions every week on the Sky app right? oh, and, and don't put any money no, on listen, them no okay. well, I, I can't do that can I but what I do oh, sorry do is, yeah very good point <laughs> I, I say I say is that right Prutch yeah I'll show you so I have a little laugh to myself when I look at them and you only <laughs> and you only have to look at the teams in the in the division <laughs> so I've got you there haven't I you have so, that's uh, right there yeah. remember Paul Cook pulled you up on that one as well once before didn't he where was we anyway you said you had us to get beat remember where was we I tell you, he's done that, Paul Cook. Nathan Jones, I forgot to mention it to Jones last week. He, he, he'd kind of properly given me a bit, bit of really? round set. Listen, which, I, don't, uh, I don't mind. It's, you, it's your job, mate, isn't it? It's, but, what, it's what the experts have to do. And when the experts yeah. turn up, Lowy, I'll let them do it. But yeah, for now, exactly. it's just me, mate. <laughs> and and that, that's fine, mate. But to answer the question to the best I can, we want to try and stay in the top half of the division as long as we can, mate. We've done that last season and we fell mm. short by six points. Are the big teams and the big hitters going to start coming good? You, you probably like to think so. Was there a lot of teams last season who didn't get nowhere near the playoffs who were bigger and should be better and, and finances? Yeah, of course. But again, mate, we're just going to relish the opportunity of going to places like Southampton, Leicester and Leeds and having a real good go with them. And let alone the teams that, like, sort of, you know, where the teams are at the moment, like to the others' fields and the Rotherhams, they're still going to be tough games to go to, as you well know. So we don't take anything for granted, me, the staff and the players. Whatever team we come up against, we come up against them, we'll have a right good go. And you know what, Prutz? If we can get as many points as we possibly can and come down to the last 10 games and you can have a little look and think, you know what, there's an opportunity here. That's all we'll do. Because I've had my fingers burned before by saying, oh, we're going to do this, going to do that. And then you get shot down our fans have been fantastic this season with the players, myself and the staff, knowing that's a real togetherness there and we'll keep producing to try and get as many points as we possibly can. Who knows, look, listen, at one point I'd love to get to the promised land with Preston North End. Is that difficult? Of course it is. But you only have to look at Luton who should be everyone's go-to to say, well, they can do it. Why can't anyone else? The great thing is, I mean, you both know how small my backbone is. So the next round of predictions will be a Preston win. I mean, that's just a. That's, let's just clarify that. <laughs> then you'll right have Shuey on your case, won't you? Say exactly. You yeah. In fact, it's definitely a draw. I'm going for a draw. And the and the great thing is, Stanley, it, it's it's Preston is part of a footballing hotbed up in the northwest that we've all. If you love football, regardless of where you are geographically, Preston North End, the big old name in the in in the grand scheme of English football, isn't it? That we love covering, and and you being from that neck of the woods and in that neck of the woods, you'll know absolutely all about that. Absolutely, yeah, and it's funny how the history of a club like Preston North End can weigh heavy on some when they pull the shirt on. But actually, if you kind of get your own new identity under a under a new young manager, then you know it can give you the, the freshness, I suppose, and the confidence to say, well, we can add to that history, and that's how it looks from the outside looking in at the moment at Deepdale. So uh, yeah, all the best, Ryan, with with the rest of it all. I appreciate it, David. Youngish manager, I'd say. Just to well, I'm forty. I'm forty-five next week, Prutz. Am I when, when next week? Uh, the eighteenth of September. Oh, I'm, I'm the twelfth, and I'm not forty-five. But that's a different uh, thing altogether. I'm the youngest uh, of the three of us. You and are right, the you. oldest of the three of us. So there, there <laughs> we go. And I'm not a manager, so I mean, you know. <laughs> Never mind, David. Prutz, <laughs> go on. Talk to me about the beard. 
Well, I, I'd just like to say categorically on air that it's not dyed. However, on okay. the filter on well, here, it looks very dark. Well, that was the, that. all our lads, so Big Polly was asking, did you have the hockey so, book on it? Well, so if, no. if, if you go to, um, this is not me bumping up my own socials, Prutz Official on Instagram, there's a wonderful <laughs> picture I got sent that makes me look, that is comparing me to Rylan, which, I mean, oh. having seen this, and I was doing a little, little bit for Sky Sports on deadline day on this very same setup, and the fella said to me as we were doing all this, he said, have you put a filter on your computer? And I said, no, why? And he went, hmm, all right, don't matter. Let's, we'll be, I said, will it be all right? He said, yeah, we'll crack on. Went on, hence looking like a computer-generated version of myself with eyebrows and, and, and like a very sharp eyebrows, a, like a chiselled nose, a dark beard. And I've never had so many text messages off the back of it saying, what on earth have you done? So I've had to clarify, there's no dye, there's no facial reconstruction as yet. I'm not old enough, but that will come in time. Uh, but if you got up close and personal, mate, you'd see the white in it. But well, well, look, what I will say, mate, is I think you've smartened your gear up so you look a million dollars. And I think the beard suits you, so you look great. Keep well, well, uh, well, what a wonderful way to end. All about me. We spoke to Ryan Lowe, we spoke to David Stout, we've heard from Liam Rossini. Let's end everyone staring at me. I don't feel self-conscious at all. Anyway, chaps, it's been a pleasure. Thank you so much for this. Stowley, have you enjoyed yourself again? I've loved it, and my big takeaway is that you are giving managers their team talks with your predictions. <laughs> they are getting feisty yeah, because of what exactly. you're saying. So I'll take that away from this. Be careful. And Lowy, it's been a pleasure, my friend. As a former teammate and seeing you in the dugout, it's been wonderful to see your career progress. And long may it continue, mate. Thanks, mate. Appreciate it. Cheers, David. Always a pleasure, of course, to work with former teammates and former colleagues and current colleagues right here on the EFL podcast. My thanks to Ryan Lowe, Liam Rossini and David Stowell. As always, if you've enjoyed it, then please do give us a five-star rating. Press the follow button and share on all of your socials. If you'd like to get in touch, our email address is podcast at EFL.com. That's podcast at EFL.com. My name is David Prusson and I'll see you same time next week for another episode of the official EFL podcast.